Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with another book haul. Uh, this is a store-specific book haul, and in particular, it is for Strand in New York City. Uh, I did not go to Strand in person, uh, but instead, I uh, engaged in an online shopping trip in order to help support them. Uh, after Casey, my fellow gladiator, informed me about the fact that uh, they are going through uh, detrimental, challenging times like plenty of brick-and-mortar businesses, and especially brick-and-mortar bookstores, uh, are enduring. Uh, and so I felt that I should pay them a visit and uh, acquire some books. Uh, and by some, I mean... 10 books, uh, nine of which I have right now. Uh, there was a book called The Great Cheese Cookbook by James Robson that they have not had in stock. Uh, and funny enough, uh, right before I filmed this video, uh, two more books came, because uh, I had seven of them, uh, and then two more came just in time for me to film this haul and show you what I got. Uh, so let's get right into it. The first two books uh, pertain to the topic of the Supreme Court. And I want to learn more about uh, the Supreme Court and the justices. And I want to be able to get a well-rounded uh, point of view. So I felt that I should acquire uh, two books from justices that think incredibly different from one another. Uh, the first one is from the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, I Got My Own Words uh, by Ruth Bader Ginsburg with Mary Hartnett and Wendy W. Williams. This is uh, an, an, auto an autobiographical account of hers and her experiences. And on the other side, I got Alito Dissents, the U.S. Supreme Court Dissenting Opinions of Justice Samuel Alito. This was collected by Joshua Warren. Uh, this is volume one and covers his tenure from uh, 2006 to 2015. Uh, the terms are 2005 to 2014, uh, but... Uh, this was, uh, it, uh, he became, uh, he was appointed by George W. Bush in 2006, so it covers that range, and it will be interesting to learn more about his thought process when it comes to his uh, rulings on uh, major cases. And I'm pretty sure that since he was on the dissent for the Affordable Care Act, uh, that will be mentioned as well. Next one I picked up is Alliance Rising uh, by C.J. Cherry and Jane S. Fancher. Uh, I'm looking to get more into science fiction, and in particular libertarian science fiction. And this was a winner of the Prometheus Award. Uh, this is the most recent winner uh, from the time that I'm acquiring this. And I want to see how this uh, speaks to me and uh, what I get out of uh, this sense of speculation in this particular uh, world. I wanted to also uh, incorporate some literary fiction into my collection, and I was referring to the uh, BookTube Prize finalists, and this one finished in second uh, in the Fiction Prize for 2020, and uh, this is uh, 10 minutes and 38 seconds in the strange world by Leif uh, Shafak, and this pertains to the uh, uh, this pertains to the subject who uh, 
has become, uh, she's dead, but not brain dead. And the last 10 minutes and 38 seconds of her life and how, uh, she has these, uh, flashbacks and occurrences of everything that took place, summing everything up. The next book that I got is African American Poetry, 250 Years of Struggle and Song. Uh, this is from Library of America. I really admire uh, Library of America and its efforts to chronicle as much of American literature as possible, uh, be it fiction or nonfiction. Uh, and this covers a wide range of uh, writers uh, that are uh, African American, uh, starting starting with uh, Phyllis Wheatley and the 18th century. And it also covers those from the current day, which is also very important. I think that being able to recognize every writer that a particular group, a race, a gender, uh, a nationality, a religion has to offer from all periods of time. Uh, I think it's all important. And I think that this, this is the effort that needs to be made in order to discover those underrated hidden gems. And I'm really intrigued to see what this collection has to offer. Next book that I got is The Cheese Chronicles by Liz Thorpe. Uh, it's a journey through the making and selling of cheese in America from field to farm to table. Uh, I picked up a book of hers before uh, pertaining to uh, the uh, the most noteworthy cheeses in the world. And then just her take on the kinds of cheese that fall under that a uh, tree per se, like a family tree. Uh, uh, Thorpe is a uh, Thorpe's the vice president of Murray's Cheese Shop. I went to the uh, their branch at Grand Central Terminal, and I was very impressed. Uh, if I had uh, if I had more time, I would have really immersed myself. I was able to. Uh, come out with uh, two types of cheese, but uh, those kind of places I like to be able to uh, uh, taste and uh, acquire, and hopefully when things get better, uh, we can go back to doing these particular things. Uh, but I'm really eager to learn about her experience. Next one that I picked up is Classical Tur Turkish Cooking, uh, Traditional Turkish Food for the American Kitchen by Ayla Algar. And if anything, I'm interested in learning more about uh, world culture, uh, in this case, Turkish culture, in this case, Turkish cuisine. I really am interested in learning about different countries through their food. And I think that it's just a knowledgeable way of being able to find that connection of what makes us more similar than different. And you can never go wrong with food. These two books are the ones that arrived today. Uh, and one of them was mentioned on Goodreads' as a potential list of uh, International Booker Prize nominees, and it ended up being a finalist, and that is The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa. And 
this has some really uh, horrifying dystopian elements. Uh, and I think that in this day and age, where we're beginning to see uh, what can arguably be deemed as more uh, dystopian elements in our society, uh, I think that works like this become even more uh, intense and uh, speculative, uh, where uh, this is an extreme account, but still. Finally, I acquired Dear Theo, the autobiography of Vincent Van Gogh, edited by Irving Stone, and this pertains to Vincent Van Gogh's letters to his brother. And uh, Van Gogh is uh, an artist that has picked up renown in today's day and age, but during his lifetime, he struggled both with his sanity and his ability to uh, sell. Uh, he only sold one painting in his lifetime. And uh, I've been listening to uh, Don McLean's Vincent. Uh, it has appeared on the radio. I've listened to it on my own time. It's just one of the saddest songs. And it really explores just a very tortured life and how Van Gogh wanted to make something of it and was not able to do so. So these are the books that I picked up from Strand and I'm really looking forward to making my way through them. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel, and I will leave information down below to Strand's site and how you too can acquire the books that interest you. And they have quite a nice selection, so I think you will enjoy your visit. For now, and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.